What's up everybody? Hey listen, on this episode all we're going to really do is start buttoning up some of the odds and ends, the little pieces of the motor. Um, so the motor was put in last episode, we put in the engine and um, that's really about it. I did some other things, I dropped in the radiator, um, wired up some of the, you know, the wires and just kind of bolted some little odds and ends and things and not a whole lot, I'll show you guys what I've done. But um, we're going to be going now more in depth into finalizing so this is the fun part man we get to go through and everything that I've taken off it's just bolt on so we got a lot of things so I said I was gonna make a list last time and that's what I did so I went ahead and started a list on everything I need to do to actually get this thing fired up and running so let's look at the list okay so this is the things I've just kind of jotted down now but obviously some some such stupid obvious engine oil don't want to forget that it's on the list coolant don't want to forget that training fluid um, in the transmission because it has been drained, so I don't want to forget to not put training fluid in while the engine's, transmission's out. Um, pull out the engine to the frame, we're going to do that here in a minute because right now it's just still sitting in the engine wobbling. Um, the PVC uh, seal, I went ahead and got a Ford PVC seal, a new one from Ford, not a crappy Dorman one. Um, and installed that last night, uh, pulled down engine to frame, so they're ready. Fuel lines are not locked. Um, basically, guys, spent you have no idea how much time, like freaking four hours getting one fuel line clicked on that we didn't want to go on. Anyways, I got that sorted out. Fuel lines hooked up now to the engine. Power string lines are hooked up. Cross that out. I got a bolt the intake all the way down right now. It's just sitting on two studs or two bolts in the center. All the wires need to be extended and hooked up. Star wire needs to be hooked up. The O2 wires need to be hooked up. These hold. Oh yeah, fancy camera action, man. I'll tell you what. Hollywood style. O2 wire needs to be hooked up, the AC wire needs to be hooked up. Vacuum lines are yeah, like 99% hooked up. I think there's one left. We gotta run the master air wires. Uh, obviously the master swap conversion. Fuel pump still needs to be swapped. Um, the rear brakes are leaking. I've gotta fix that before I can drive it really. Torque down the front wheels. I'll make sure I always put this on because I tend to just hand tighten them while I'm working on it. Rolling on the garage, I want to make sure I don't forget to do that. Why I go crazy? You can go for a test drive, and I keep bumping the camera. Throttle cable feels bad. This is something I don't know if it's stock or not. The throttle fit cable feels gritty. Um, and we install a radiator and cool system. The radiator has been installed. Cool system still needs work done. Okay, so just kind of going over what I have done. Like I said, I did hook up the throttle cable. I mean, it was dangling. Just anything that was kind of dangling around the motor that was, you know, the Captain Obvious here has been bolted in. So the throttle cable's been bolted up. It's got a bit of a feel. Not. It feels like it's binding. I honestly don't know if it's. You can actually hear it. I think it's the spring. But this is the one that came on my '86. Maybe it was like that all the time. I just never noticed it until now. I don't know. But that's been done. Um, there's the two fuel lines. I struggled tremendously with yesterday um, I ended up taking the whole fuel line this this fuel line off completely and then taking apart an Explorer fuel line rail I've got over there to make sure it clicked and the Explorer one went right in so it ended up being just a little bit of a odd shape on the bottom fuel line the one that goes to the tank had it kind of reshaped I think I bent it a little bit when I was uh, pulling it out with a vice grip so be careful using vice grips on fuel lines um, let's see we got the Cable hooked up. I went ahead and hooked up um, all the vacuum hoses at the back. The, inside, the throttle body has been hooked up. Let me show you guys here. I say throttle body. The main vacuum line has been hooked up and replaced. This hose was really stiff and cracked. I went ahead and got a new hose for it so it's nice and flexible. So that is the main vacuum source. This is going to my speed sensor here. This is going for the cruise control and the brake booster line, of course. And I've got this guy here that goes to the AC and the check valve and the ball canister underneath the fender. I had a problem last night with that thing leaking, so I had to replace some lines to make that work. I still need a spot to hook this up to the manifold. There's a spot down there, uh, but it's too small for this, so I need some sort of adapter to make this fit nice and tight. So I haven't done that yet. Um, yeah, and that's really about it. So right now, what I want to do, before I bolt the motor down, it's going to tighten up the motor, because right now it's held in by a torque strap. Right, the torque strap, <laughs> tie down strap that's just holding it kind of in place and where it should be relative to the transmission drive line. 
Um, but right now it's actually really handy having it loose so I can, you know, move the motor back and forth and it'll let me get to those bolts in the back for the bell house, which is going to be bolted on here in a minute. So I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is take the bell house off, hook up the clutch fork and new um, throw out bearing and try to get it slid on and bolt it into the back of the motor. That way when it comes time to put the transmission in, it's just a matter of stabbing it in place. Yeah. So we're going to try to do that, and we're also going to try to do um, some ground wires. I know this is not exciting. You guys are probably thinking, yeah, get to it. Just skip all this video, Mike, and let's just start it up and go. You know, there's still a lot of work to be done. I want to show that, you know, if you guys are doing this, and you're stabbing a new motor in your engine, or in your Mustang, that there's actually lots of little little stuff, you know, that you don't want to forget and do. And we're doing a lot, so I'm not going to skip any details, unfortunately. Sorry for you guys if you're bored with the details, but we're not going to skip the details. Um, one thing I do want to do is finalize the wiring down here so I can go ahead and put those stupid inner fenders that are sitting on top of my cowl up in place. And to do that, i got to run the ground. So I've got some ground wires I need to run, and I want to go ahead and run the starter wire. The starter is going to go from, from this post down to the starter, which is, is it there, of course, but it will be. Because once the bell house is in place, the starter can also go in place. Yeah, and these are the cables I had on the... Um, this is the cables I ran on the battery that I made. They're really nice cables here that I used for the um, when the battery was in the um, in the in the engine compartment. And this is the one I used for my starter. So I'm going to reuse this. The brackets are nasty, but the starter cable itself is bueno. Okay, so what do we do first? Let's continue the wiring. In fact, the wiring's not even on the list. I need to add it to the wiring. Or add that to the list. So let's get to it. Okay, I've got the uh, starter cable hooked up, and it doesn't look pretty at all. I really want to find a better cable to hook this up with. I don't, I don't like it just dangling right there, man. I mean, come on. You know, you spend all this time cleaning up the engine bay, and you got this. So if I had a really long one, and I would need a lot more cable, I could run it. That way to the starter, and then you know run it from this frame just directly over to the starter instead of looping underneath the engine. But I don't have any cable, so I don't know. I don't like it, but it'll work for now. Okay, you guys remember the uh, the battery cable we got going all the way to the trunk to the battery? It's right here. We got our power cable. Our ground cable goes to this ground spot where every engine connection for the engine harness is connected to. And then we've got another, I think it's a four gauge cable. Now, back here, go in there, tie to the frame, and it's gonna get tucked underneath here when I'm done hooking up the engine mount, and that goes straight to the engine block. Oh yeah, come on under here. Right there, so it's gonna go It's not going to, it is. It's going here, and it's going to the side of the engine block. So I've got a a four gauge cable going straight to the battery basically straight to the side engine block so there's no doubt in my mind that the chassis is getting ground in two spots the back and the front here and now the engine block I'm also going to tie in the back of the engine block so that pretty much ties up the wiring thank god and because I hate wiring it's not fun so that ties up the wiring and then I'm going to go ahead See if we can get the bell house off. If we get the bell house off, I'll get the uh, engine covers put on. So that'll probably tie it up for tonight. It's getting late already. It's been way too much, too long hooking that stupid cable. Okay, bell house is off. It's pretty damn light. We'll simply get the new throw out bearing, take off the old one. I'll tell you what, this is difficult stuff, but guys, I'll tell you what, man. Mm. So this is shot, you can hear it. Listen. So that's why we got a new one. Not to mention the clutch is such a high press, you know, quite a bit more high pressure. Look at that. So that one's gone. But the new high pressure clutch is going to require 
a quite a bit heavier duty uh, throwout bearing. I'm also going to make sure that this slides nice and easy along the input shaft. And it does. Okay, that's it, man. Just like that. New throwout bearing. Nice and new. Looks like we got some wear points here. I'm going to put just a little dab of grease here and clean this up a little bit and be right back. Okay, so it's been cleaned up a little bit. I'm going to put just a little dab of grease on the corners here with the uh, thrust bearing, uh, throw up bearing, kind of rides against. Clean up the inside a little bit and also put a new dab of grease here on where this pivots on your uh, the pivot, pivot point here. Go ahead and clean up that pivot point as well. It's pretty dirty. And guys, I'm no expert on this on these clutches by any means, or manuals, or anything like that. But I do know that if these have wear on them, you do want to you do want to replace these. So I'm going to look at mine here. And I'll be honest, it looks pretty worn. It's got a little bit of a uh, dimpling on it. It's definitely not round like you would expect. That's how it installs, and that's it. So that clicks into your into your um, the pivot point, and that's it. So we'll go ahead and bolt this on onto the engine. And when it comes time to install the transmission, you just basically push it through and call it a day. Now, you push it through and that, that's really it. But, since I'm not perfectly happy with this pivot point, I'm going to replace it. Ground wires ran. Starter wire. Ran, but not happy with it. What's up guys? Hey listen, fast forward two days later, I've got ourselves a new 5 speed ball stud for the pivot. This is a pivot stud. And this is a Mikleode. And if somebody knows how to say it correctly, let me know if I'm saying it wrong. Mikleode, Leon, Leod, Mikleode, Mikleode, pivot stud. So, here's the new one. Looks quite a bit better. It's not adjustable. And it's hardened, so this is a performance one, and this should handle the torques from our new clutch just fine. In case you guys are wondering, I got this at Summit, of course. It's 16910. That's the part number. We'll stab this in place, and the bell house should be ready to go into the car. What else did I get, you ask? Because you know I don't just go to Summit for one thing. No. I can't even with this. So this is a... This is a, if I get it open, and if you want to dress like this, it's like 32 degrees. It's freezing for us. It literally is freezing for us Texans. It's pretty cold in the garage, so see how long it can last out here tonight. But this is There you go. So all you guys out there, see I'm doing everything wrong and I haven't replaced this yet. There you go. This is a new one. This is a Summit branded part and it is it's 120 bucks I think. Yes, I could have bought a used one, but this is 130 amp and it's new and it comes with a one year warranty. So that is cool. We'll be installing this in another video though. Okay, so this Pivot ball stud here is a 7 8. So let's look at the difference between the two. So, this is the reason why I replaced mine. When I looked at it from an angle like this, I realized hey, if you can see they're not, it's not actually round. It's more of a cone shape and it's divoted and it's all 
All kinds of beat up. Let's see if that helps here. Versus nice new round ones. So clearly there is a difference between the two. And um, don't skip on this, guys, because this is what the whole clutch rides on. This affects your clutch feel, um, the play, how much they have to push for it to release. And uh, a lot of people go through cables, replace the cables, do all kinds of stuff like that. You try to get a better clutch feel when, you know, you should just replace this. And honestly, you should replace the clutch fork as well, because this rides. This rides in the ball of your clutch fork. And I can see mine here. It clicks in like this, see? And mine actually feels good. It doesn't feel like it's uh, wobbling. It doesn't feel worn. So that my, sh if you can see inside of there, the clutch fork itself is actually pretty good shape. Um, in fact, it looks looks just fine. It's just the stud, the pivot stud itself is worn. So anyways, that's why we're replacing this. We're gonna go ahead and put this on, and grease it up. <laughs> Okay, grab my bag of bell house and starter bolts. To the belly here. Okay, come on down here with me, guys. I think what I am going to do real quick before I put the bell house on is try to somehow grab the camera with one hand. So here's my ground strap. This is the original ground strap that I'm glad I'm back here because I'm trying to put it on. But I did leave the bolt right up here in anticipation to put it on. So let's go ahead and put this on. Bell house is on. Got all the bolts torqued probably way too tight, but they are on. So we'll get the starter on and um, the clutch cable is pretty much ready to hook back up. I'm gonna wait till the transmission's in. So I don't have any problems with the uh, you know the clutch fork binding. It shouldn't have any issues, but make sure I pull this guy out before we sign the transmission in. But we're ready to go. Now we're going to go ahead and torque down the motor mount since I no longer need it to fall backwards like it's doing right now to get to the vault. So right now I've just got it loosely tied so the motor will tilt back. So, yeah. Yeah, you bolt down engine to frame. Bolt down intake, alternator wire, starter, vacuum, mass, mass air flow, torque, and install rad, ground wires, bell house, starter. And now we have an alternator install. Alternator. Boom. Okay, guys, that's it for tonight. It's already 11 o'clock. Um, we'll see you tomorrow. Our Saturday. See you soon. What's up, everybody? Hey, I'm back on this Saturday night. It is a good 35 degrees outside. No big deal. So, listen, I got the bell house in. I made a little bit of work today. Not much. I think it worked about an hour on today. I extended the AC cable uh, that turns the AC compressor on about three or four foot to uh, wrap it nice uh, behind the motor. And I uh, went ahead and put the uh, inner fender on. on driver's side so things are happening it's just really slow guys okay so nothing huge one thing you will notice is that the AC cable is plugged in and it's not draped across this area here um, it's because I extended it and ran it 
and kind of in a path I need to fix, but it is ran underneath the manifold and it's ran back under here, underneath the, underneath the fender and plugged in. So at least it is going, um, you know, behind everything. It's not too, too noticeable, so it's not draping. In the meantime, let's go and get this transmission in. I've taken off the shifter, propped it off with some wood, and I've went ahead and taken off the drain plug here. So we're going to go ahead and, sorry, right there. We're going to go ahead and fill this thing up until the um, flue starts coming out. And um, we're going to put the shifter back on, lift the car back up, and see if we can't slide in the uh, transmission tonight. I think it's some scotch bright that's coming off this gasket before I fill it up. Slowly pour it down, and there's other ways to fill this, guys. You can fill it in pretty much orifice in the transmission you want, but I'm filling it in the uh, shifter area. And there are holes in here, it's just slow, but it is draining into the pan. We want to make sure this thing fills up until it comes out right here. So I can see it's already getting a little bit. Full. Not much of this spilled out whenever I emptied it, but let's put a solid quart in here. So, again, what I'm going with is a synthetic. Um, you do want to make sure you don't use gear oil, obviously. These use Dexton Mercon 3. This is a Dextron um, 4, but it's a full synthetic. And you can tell that by, let's see here, make sure that it's definitely compatible. It is, I've already looked at this, it is definitely compatible with Dextron 2 or Dextron 3, including most GM vehicles, blah, 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 for Dextron Mercon. This is a Dextron 3 compatible full synthetic that we're gonna be running in this. And we're spilling out the side, so we know we're full. Okay, so my battery died again, and doesn't matter. I've got the plug in, I've got it filled. And I've got a jacked up camera. This thing is falling. Look, what is it doing? Oh man, I need a new camera, guys. And good lord, hope my camera's not dying. See that? Ghost in the camera. Before I try to get under and stab this in, I'm going to put some grease on the front of the, uh, well, the input shaft. Just a little thin film of grease on the input shaft. The transmission is going to get rebuilt. It's getting worn out. Okay, you can see I'm pretty winded right now. Uh, it's the next day. So, um, let me see, I have a seat here. Yeah, I'm getting old. So there's no holding back on this YouTube channel and um, I've been a bad host because I didn't actually film putting the transmission in, mainly because I have been exhausted and this has worn me out. Um, transmission's in, as of just now. Uh, I worked on this thing last night until about midnight until I really couldn't feel my arms and joints anymore. I was just sore, man. <laughs> Being underneath the car, lifting that thing up. Um, but I got it in. Let me show you how I got it in. Let me show you the, the troubles I had. I think it's because the pilot bearing, everything's so new, it's just tight. Transmission will go all the way back until about half an inch, and that's where it was um, basically the, the snout of your input shaft wasn't going to the pilot bearing. So that half an inch is exactly what needs to go into the pilot bearing. 
and it wasn't going in there. Um, so I, I didn't want to just, you know, I, I got the bolts in line, got them in. I didn't want to crank it down. That would have cracked, you know, the bell house. Let me show you guys what I ended up doing to get it in with a mishmash of jack stands, a jack to help support the tail, a jack up on the bell house to support the motor, and a C clamp to compress the clutch. I was able to squeeze it in. So you can see that it, it's in now, and I now I just need to. You know, tighten the bolts down. So, whew, man. Yeah. So I'm sorry I didn't film it. Um, it's hard to get down here, especially at night, and film this stuff and the grease and oil is falling over me. So it wasn't, you know, all that fun. But it's in. Um, this would be a lot easier if you had a lift and you can actually stand up, or you had a transmission jack. Uh, you know, again, the right tool for the right job would make a lot of things a lot simpler. So it's in. I'm gonna go ahead and um, bolt these down here and on the corners and then we're gonna get the cross member in okay i know the sun is super bright through here but um i've got the cross member or the i'm sorry the mount the poly mount is now on um the bolts are tight around the transmission so it is on and i went ahead and take off took the uh, clamp off the clutch is not holding it anymore so now we're just going to lift it in place and try to get the cross member on okay let's see if we can get this under here comes with some new hardware Oh yeah. Of course I can't do this with one hand. I always try to admit my mistakes. But I have forgotten that actually I didn't forget. I did some research. I looked up real quick, um just because I've you know never done this before, but the cross member is in wrong right now. So it always benefits for you guys to keep watching these videos. Anyways, the big hump, which is here, this is a bigger hump. That's a little bit shallower. Goes on the passenger side, so this is actually in the wrong spot. So, no big deal. I need to flip it. So that's what we'll do. Okay, guys, it is flipped around. Looks a little bit better. It's way over. The whole transmission's pushed this way. I'm need. We're gonna go ahead and get a jack underneath it here. Man, this is way off. Good sound. Guys, transmission is in. It's officially in. Come on, girl. What are you doing? Okay. Now it's officially in. So, we still got lots to do. I got to hook up all the connections, hook up the clutch, hook up the speedometer cable. Hook up the exhaust, hook up the starter, starter cable, and a drive shaft. Lots to do. So, I think we can cross some stuff off the list and add some stuff. All right, let's see what we got here. Starter, alternator, bell house. I don't even have the transmission on here. That's a shame because I got nothing to cross off. Eh, let's just add it because you know what it makes me feel better. Tranny. Transmission. Cross off. See? I'd write things down, just cross them off. It makes me feel better. Transmission fluid. Hey, I can cross that off. We want to cross off the uh, we actually want to add the cross member bolts need tighten. Cause I haven't done that yet. Let's see here. Bolt down intake all the way. Alternator wires. O2 sensor. AC wire. Aggie line transfer. Well, fuel pump. Rear brakes. Torque front wheels. Inner fender covers. That's one half done. Auto cable feeds. Cooling system. Good lord, there's a lot to do. <sighs> Exhaust. 
Um, drive shaft. Drive shaft. And I got a broken cable, so we gotta fix fix the wire to BSS, the vehicle speed sensor. Okay, so ironically how things go, whenever you get things done, the list gets longer, not shorter. But listen, I'm gonna wrap this video up. I'm gonna call this one done. Um, there's still so much to do, but the video can just get longer and longer and longer. So I'm gonna call this done. And I just found out that I reached 2,000 subscribers. Actually, I'm a little over 2,000, so I didn't even realize it. And that is super awesome. So thank you guys so much. I'll probably make a little special video just to say thank you. But um, this is going to wrap this one up. The next time you see me, we'll be doing more on the list. We'll do an alternator conversion to 3G. Don't forget, we got this new alternator here. It looks all pretty. So that'll be going in. Max air conversion. But good lord, we're awfully close to firing this thing up. So we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. Take care.